to FSEL 630, our online investigations open source intelligence course. Just wanted to welcome you to this edition of our discussion today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, online investigations in uh, what's called intellectual property enforcement. It's a very interesting um, area and we'll be talking about these tools and techniques and walking through a case study here. So if you think about what intellectual property is, it is uh, things like copyrights, trademarks, logos, service marks, um, any kind of patents, technology. Um, it really goes kind of through the whole bandwidth of different, different businesses, different um, industries, things like that. Um, we, we've seen uh, intellectual property protection become uh, pretty important over the last couple of years. Um, when it looks like things are being threatened um, overseas or, or in um, various places that become problematic, um, it can be a real uh, focal point. Focal point. Um, for example, here on the, the right hand side, you see a slide. This is from the State Department. Um, the, the intellectual property crime, uh, $180 billion lost. Um, from the theft of trade secrets and proprietary information, $18 billion from pirated software, um, and then $29 billion in, in displaced legitimate sales uh, because of counterfeiting and piracy. The This is an interesting uh, source too here from the uh, international um, Trademark Association. They basically did a study. Um, it's from 2017, but they they identify. I mean, just an unbelievable um, economic impact of of these counterfeiting and piracy. And so you'll see one of the things that is really in, interesting to think about is in terms of what this costs. Um, and what kind of impact it has on businesses. So clearly it is a priority um, for the private sector to ensure that their, um, the hard work, the innovation, the ideas are protected in the marketplace. Interpol um, has also launched an illicit goods, illicit trade uh, division uh, to focus on this. And, and it's really interesting because they point to um, studies and, and uh, cases where there's a clear link between uh, things like counterfeiting and piracy and other types of crimes. Um, most notably, I think it's really important to, to underscore the fact that um, both of my own experience and, and cases that I have um, reviewed that terrorism is actually um, one of these major crimes. So um, trafficking in, in counterfeit or uh, illicit goods um, can really be a good um, money maker for a terrorist cell um, with a very low likelihood of being caught, quite frankly. So um, I think that's why, you know, it used to be seen as a very private sector problem and it has really changed um, in perception because of the terrorism issue, but also um, because of the, the uh, public health issues, um, as we'll see here in a few slides. So I think everybody's probably familiar with, you know, the idea that you can buy Gucci handbags, uh, knockoffs and, and whatnot in, uh, in New York and in probably other major urban centers. Um, you could buy, uh, buy pirated movies, you could certainly stream and download them from, from websites, etc. Um, so there's a lot of that type of information available. Um, and of course it, it becomes a huge problem again, not only just for the, from the economic costs for the business, but for many other, um, areas as well. And we'll get into some more of the details here. So 
this is a case study taking, taken from a seizure warrant. Um, if you are interested in uh, getting a copy of this seizure warrant, I will uh, just email me um, and I will send it to you. Um, I found it online, so you can as well. And so what's really interesting is this is a uh, seizure warrant for a domain. The domain, one of the domains is hqpharmacy24online.com. And it was conducted by the Food and Drug Administration's Office of Criminal Investigations. And they've become really good at this um, in terms of being able to identify uh, foreign, mostly foreign, um, manufacturing and, and sales distribution networks that are operating online um, and then selling to US citizens. So here, basically the, the complaint uh, or the affidavit lays out a citizen complaint that was received um, by a member of industry, um, the rights holder, we call them. They launched their own internal investigation to, to determine whether or not, in fact, the items are real um, or, or counterfeit. And obviously, if they're real, um, then that means there's a diversion. So you typically think, think of an insider. Uh, but if they're fake, uh, counterfeit, then that also raises other brand protection issues. Uh, subsequently, they do their investigation. They make a criminal referral to FDA. FDA does uh, launches their own investigation. Um, interestingly enough, they both, uh, both the company and the FDA do uh, test buys uh, as well as identify the domains here. So you can see on the left, this is a, um, a portion of a screenshot that I actually went to um, under archive.org to see kind of how it was structured. It does not seem to have the same um, template, if you will, that the, um, the affidavit includes. It's a, it's a very clear image here, um, but, the, but it is kind of interesting. So you see the basic layout of, of the website. This is an interesting piece that I took from the from the affidavit, and I pointed out uh, for a variety of reasons. But first of all, LegitScript.com is an internet pharmacy verification company that provides verification services, but also does uh, this tracking. And interestingly enough, FDA contracts with LegitScript to help them uh, take down these, identify and take down these. Um, illegal online pharmacies and so that is something uh, to think about in terms of potential jobs and things like that very um, very important in the global pharmaceutical area um, this type of investigation as well as many other types of uh, different companies and law firms we'll talk more about careers in a little bit but this is uh, another this um, second paragraph what they've done is basically consolidated this effort to um, have groups of websites that are essentially owned or controlled by a single um, individual or company and that they have um, different arms called affiliates. So it's a very organized, very methodical, very process driven type of business model, um, even though it is uh, illegal. So what they were able to do is identify by uh, some commonalities, um, this medinc.biz network. And the affidavit lays out that in April of 2015, there were 82 active online pharmacies that were tied in with this. Um, and then a total, they had a total, both active and inactive, of 260 sites. Two years later, as they were getting ready to launch this particular case, they went back and updated that. There were 93 active um, sites, 39 of which were called primary websites, and then 55 of which are either landing pages or affiliate sites. But what's important here is that they were all able to be tied back to this, what's called an anchor site. And the research that enabled that is all open source investigation using who is domain name server analysis um, the, the code we'll, we'll get into some of the tools but you'll see exactly 
uh, how they they kind of deconstructed these and then were able to uh, show that they were all basically controlled or or very similar to each other um, to the point of essentially being mirrors so here we have a list of all the kind of indicators or flags that the agents and investigators were able to use and basically showing that the websites that they investigated were essentially the same um, they were all they all used the same scheme or colors um, they had the same pic exact same pictures the medications uh, they used the same text and the description um, the display kind of as it rolled out banners headings icons telephone numbers navigation menus and directories um, all of these pointing to the fact that this is the same so the more you can show um, that exactly they have that uh, the better the, the stronger your case they also went back and looked at the source code commonality uh, using you know control u or the other um, way to expose uh, the source code of a website they were able to identify the this javascript variable and basically what it does is it points back to the anchor site this di secure.biz so when they reveal it they're able to go back and show that this is exactly the same okay um, each individual one has the same source code then of course the meta description uh, things that the search engine optimization characters that again it's all the same so those are those are again really significant uh, investigative steps to be able to identify and, and explain that so when the agent did an undercover test buy uh, they used a credit card the credit card was ultimately declined but what they were able to do is get uh, that included an email from this phz uh, zaport.biz. Nobody said criminals ever spelled things correctly. So uh, they're basically saying, hey, your bank statement is not going to show this. I've worked cases, uh, online gambling cases, where this is this type of thing is exactly the same. They're basically trying to cover the fact that what you're doing is illegal and the likelihood that your bank or credit card processor or a legitimate um, payment company will actually identify this as a problem is pretty high so what they do is mask that uh, to be able to show uh, or make it look like what you're buying is is something different something more legit business technical services um, etc but the email also included alternate payment methods things like Bitcoin and a Russian PayPal address um, as well as if you wanted to send a wire transfer uh, to a company um, whose bank is in Cyprus uh, although it's registered as a limited partnership in Scotland and of course once again they tell you to make it sound like a legitimate transaction and tell you to classify it as IT or CEO services very interesting again if you're going through this investigation these are then all different ways you can start to do your investigation um, or different avenues uh, to go down um, once you have started it so the uh, affidavit asks to seize uh, asks for a court order to seize 94 domains that are uh, registered to VeriSign and so those are uh, this is the case number if you want to go try and check it out and see um, it's in the District of Colorado and so this is just you know these are just a sampling of the different different uh, sites here uh, but as you can see again they all they all go uh, to deal with uh, some kind of prescription drugs or or uh, pharmaceuticals so the court did uh, grant the 
um, the affidavits request, uh, the Food and Drug Administration seized this uh, website and uh, placed this seizure notice on the main page of the website. So as you can see, um, it's it's taking it down. It's rerouting it to a um, to a, another U.S. Um, uh, area. They're looking to change the uh, change the DNS server to point back to something else. They're changing the who is to a um, to the Food and Drug Administration cybercrime unit. Um, so very, very cool stuff. So when we look at and kind of deconstruct this, and again, you can you can read the the affidavit. And there are other affidavits as well out there. Um, there are also other um, civil actions, private civil actions um, that you can you can look into. So, but when you deconstruct these investigations, they use a lot of the same types of techniques. And almost all of them involve online investigation or OSINT techniques. So things like who who is or who who owns the domains, um, what are the business entities? We talked about the web page uh, source coding and the commonalities with that. Um, email tracing, a geolocation, physical address location. Um, certainly, a lot of these uh, can operate on the dark web as well. So, having the ability to search and and uh, analyze dark web material, Bitcoin tracing. We've we've showed that they will accept Bitcoin. Shipment tracing, uh, the actual address, packaging, other materials. Uh, things like supply chain, those are really important for these types of businesses. So to be able to track that can be very helpful. Um, other payment processors, eBay, things like that, or excuse me, not eBay, but PayPal um, and other, other things like that. Uh, public records obviously can be very helpful. And then also mapping, tracking, and analyzing the different people, the networks, the nodes. Um, obviously the bigger investigation you have, the more you have to dig into the details and the more potential people could be implicated. And so therefore you want to be able to really have an understanding and a mapping of who is actually involved in, in all of this. Um, you know, following the people, following the money, following the stuff. Those are, those are the big ones. Of course, these are common tools that are used in this, uh, in this session. So careers, this is a really interesting space. It's growing um, just kind of three, three different thing, websites there to start taking a look. Um, but if you, if you just search for brand protection or asset protection, um, you might find some retail as well, but sometimes retail is a great way to start. Um, you can do work for law firms, corporate entities, government agencies. Um, there are a lot of opportunities out there. This is big business in terms of tracking it down, taking it down, and uh, identifying it. So the last site here, I want to just go through a couple um, resources and websites you can take a look. Um, the uh, International IP um, Crime course um, is for law enforcement and private sector folks, but they also have some other really good resources on their website. That is sponsored by Interpol. Um, the IPRcenter.gov is the um, Intellectual Property Rights Coordination Center, which is um, run primarily by uh, Homeland Security Investigations, but also staffed with H HSI, Homeland Security Investigations, CBP, Customs and Border Protection, um, and as well as other government agencies. Um, there's a um, program at Michigan State University that deals specifically with anti-counterfeiting, um, does education, they publish magazines, um, a lot of it's available on the website. They do research. Really, really good opportunities to see kind of who the players are and then uh, be able to figure out 
where the jobs might be as well. Um, IACC, International Anti-Counterfeiting Coalition, the World Intellectual Property Organization, uh, a global uh, international uh, group. Cybercrime.gov is the Department of Justice uh, Computer Crimes and Intellectual Property section. They have a lot of great resources. Um, also look at the Internet Crime Complaint Center run by the FBI. And then capsinfo.com is the, uh, the Major League Baseball, the college, um, NHL, NBA, um, all those folks who are um, in the sports area dedicated to um, stopping uh, this type of uh, counterfeiting and piracy and intellectual property violations uh, from that perspective. And they're very aggressive. Um, I've had the chance to work with some of their folks um, at the Baltimore Ravens um, games. Very interesting. They do both physical and, and online uh, investigations as well. So um, so there you go. Hope uh, that was really interesting. Hope that you see uh, the potential for both careers and uh, practical abilities to identify wrongdoers, litigate claims, and protect uh, and detect intellectual property uh, violations. All right, enjoy. If you have any more questions or want to talk more about this, uh, take the discussion to the discussion board and we'll go from there. All right, have a good day.